taking action and, and going for something, you know, picking that out. I mean, what I do is not for everybody. And I will say too, like my end goal is not to be like, tippy top leader of this company, blah, blah, blah. And all of that, like my goal and what I like to show people is this is a way, whatever business model you choose, a way for you to generate extra income, diversify outside of the OR, and you can use that to fuel other ventures and other incomes as well. Welcome to the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones, and I'm so excited that you're here. The Plan B CRNA podcast is the only show made specifically for nurse anesthetists who are exploring options outside of their traditional career paths. This is the place to expand your mind and your goals as we uncover new ways to produce side income together. Join me for some honest, unscripted discussions with other CRNAs who are transforming their financial lives. This episode is brought to you by On Call Capital. On Call Capital is dedicated to educating CRNAs and other healthcare providers about investing outside of the traditional stock market. On Call Capital also provides opportunities for you, yes, you, to create passive income and generational wealth while also lowering your taxable income through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure you do that right now so that you don't miss an episode. Thanks so much for joining me today. And now on with the show. Welcome to another Provider Spotlight episode of the Plan B CRNA podcast. My guest today is a busy mom, CRNA, wife, and a new business owner. After many years of on and off fertility treatments to build her family, paying tens of thousands of dollars out of pocket, Sarah Cole knew that she had to find a better way outside of overtime and 1099 jobs in the OR. So as an alternative, she found huge success in a direct sales model, replacing her income and re recently being offered an opportunity to build this company, modernizing the current industry she's in. Now, Sarah helps working parents build sustainable businesses online without any overhead or startup investments. She's a founding director with a ground level wellness company that's working directly with the corporate team of Hue and Grace. Sarah also coaches others on building something sustainable to break free of the 40 plus hour work week grind. Sarah, it's it's such a pleasure to have you on the show today. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm excited to hear about your journey. Yeah, thanks so much. I'm excited to be on here. And I um, love this podcast and what you're doing too. It's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, you are able to, as you know, the vast majority of CRNAs out there, you can produce a fantastic full-time income. So when and why did you first begin to look outside of your anesthesia income for fulfillment? Yeah. So um, first of all, you know, I love this career. This is something where I will always be in the OR. I will always be using my skills. I worked really hard to get through anesthesia school, but it was actually about Eight to nine years ago, I was a new CRNA, a couple years out, um, thinking, okay, I got my dream career. Along with that, though, too, is all that student loan debt, right? You have that, you know, over six figures of student loan debt. It's like a small mortgage that you're paying, at least in the, I was in the North Shore of Chicago working, right? You know, it's mm -hmm. pretty expensive to live there. Um, my husband had just finished up his MBA as well. And I mean, we were doing great, but we wanted to build our family. And long story short, we found ourselves on that fertility journey and yeah. everything was out of pocket. You know, we didn't have insurance coverage. I worked for a great W2, worked for a really great hospital. I, I ended up getting a job where I went to school. Um, Thankfully, even though I was so, you know, in grad school there and everything, they still decided to hire me, seeing me at my worst, <laughs> you know, um, but I had a great experience there. And um, I was like, okay, we got to afford, you know, thousands a month out of pocket. One round of IVF is around 18 to 20 grand per round. You don't even know if that's Jeez. going to work, right? It's expensive. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. So I was like, okay, how am I going to do this? So what I was doing, I picked up a 1099 job. I worked at a plastic surgeon's office. I was leading the heart team. I was making the call schedules. I said yes to everything. And a job that I absolutely love, I started to get resentful. I started to get burnt out. I started to not love it anymore. And I knew I wasn't performing at my best. And I, and I am a type A person. I like, when I do something, I'm all in, I like to perform at my best. And I knew I was gaining weight. You know, I was just, I wasn't, didn't have time for myself. I was like, there's gotta be a better way. 
And I knew of some other CRNAs that were with a skincare um, direct sales company. I was like, oh, that's so cute. They're doing this little skincare thing. They must be making like, you know, just for fun with their friends. <laughs> Couple hundred, you know, a month. You know, that's super fun with their like little neighborhood It's so mom adorable. Friends. It's adorable, you know. <laughs> and then I found out that they were more than covering their mortgages with it. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait a minute. Um, what do you mean? You know, how how is this even work? Because I have... There's a stigma, you know, around direct sales. And I fully was bought into the stigma. I thought they were silly. I didn't think they were legitimate. Um, I thought they were a pyramid scheme. And I just honestly didn't know much about it. So I learned from them. And my dad is actually very savvy. He's actually into multifamily real estate as well, alongside his um, engineering career. He's retired now, but that's his okay. retirement plan. And my dad was like, Sarah, it's actually a great business model. You just have to make sure it's a good company and you don't have inventory and it's not like a self-consumption model where it's just distributors that are buying product. Like you need to make sure just vet the company. And, um, I got involved. I was like, okay, well this beats all my overtime shifts. I might as well. And it's mostly on social media. I was like, I don't know how to mm -hmm. use social media. Like my old, like Facebook timeline was like just my birthdays. <laughs> like, like oh my goodness. So, so, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I, I got to stop you here because I see you yeah. all over social media. So like oh, saying yeah. you don't know how to use social media, like, You've obviously learned that really quickly. Yeah. So, I mean, that, well, that's, it's amazing what you've been able to accomplish in a very short period of time. So, uh, and, and, and yeah, that's jumping ahead. Okay. So, yeah. so let's, yeah. let's get back to, okay. How did you vet the company, Hugh and Grace? How did you vet them? So Hugh and Grace is actually just came onto my radar about eight months ago, before Hugh and Grace, okay. I got involved with a wellness company um, that also did wellness. And then I, well, I started with a skincare, built mm -hmm. that up, and I replaced, like, I was making about, like, a bedside nursing salary with it. Like, what I mean, you know, which, which oh, is yeah, great. just yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Well, you know, it was great. It was great. Yeah. I mean, it helped us afford IVF. I now have a five year old. Absolutely. Fast forward, oh, you know, congratulations. It allowed me, thank you. And we're allowed to, and I was able to work more part time um, and everything. Um, and then I kind of learned about the industry more and I learned how to do um, different types of marketing, how to do copywriting, how to add value on social media to attract people, how to work with a cold market, not bother friends and family you know, and really build a legitimate online business with this model. Um, so um, I was able to get to like around a six figure income with a wellness company, thought I'd be there forever. And then my current company, the CEOs are a married couple. They had a 14 year infertility journey too. And oh, wow. they, they knew somebody that I knew from undergrad and they're just trying to network. They found out about me. They found out I've had success in the industry, found out I'm in the medical field, found out I also have an infertility journey as well. And they just wanted to network with me. I got on a zoom and I just, I fell in love with what they wanted to do because I've always really wanted to help a startup company launch. Um, there's a lot of opportunity when you do this type of industry, being one of the first with the company before everybody knows about it. Right. Absolutely. Um, right. And I wanted it's my big, this is kind of my big chance to teach people like, this is a great model if you're with a good company and you can do it in this way. Um, and to really have a say in that and work directly with the corporate team to do that. So I jumped on with them about seven months ago, right when they launched. Um, and it's been a lot of fun. It's been cool. great. Cool. So, yeah. so what is it about this company that's that's different from maybe some of the others that you've been involved with? I mean, obviously, yeah. you, you you mentioned that you were making a very good living yeah. with another company. So, I mean, there had to be a tremendous <laughs> pull yeah. to, to pull you away from that into this. So what what was the difference for you? Yeah, well, and it's, it's like it all kind of came together. Like while I was going to this new company, my husband started was starting his a new company as well in restoration I, and I can get into that later too but um I just I I looked at I look at a company and when I'm trying to decide if I want to partner with them I am somebody who wants to do something that is a mission driven company when you are doing something when you are building any sort of business that all you care about is making money and your own bottom line you're never going to get anywhere when you can really lead with a purpose, when you can really lead with something that's mission driven and to have it in your heart that you want to elevate and inspire and impact other people in a positive way. And it's not about you anymore. That's going to give you the fire in you to keep going when things get hard, when things,
things have up and ups and downs, you know? So the fact that it's a mission driven company, that's all about teaching about hormone health and, and clean products. Um, and I won't even go into that. I can go talk about that forever, but it's mission driven. It's, it's something where I can, I can create a team and a culture and a community that people can really get behind that. It's not about the money all the time. They can stick with it long term um, and build a legacy, you know, is really what I'm trying to teach people how to do. So I love that. And I love that um, you obviously don't stock any, any inventory and there's just no overhead. Um, it's all online. It's really people spend at, at least in 2020. I think the statistic was two and a half hours on social media day for an average person. That's a Holy lot. smokes. <laughs> on social media, right? If you no, that's not me. Give... That's not me at all. Right, no, 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 don't you scroll. put that on me. Uh, I know, I that's... <laughs> right. But if you can monetize that time, if you can teach people how to intentionally yeah. use that time yeah. and build that income, that consistency can compound, you know? And I mean, maybe it's an extra two, 300 bucks a month. You know, but I mean, hey, you know, that's something that can you can use for whatever clean, cleaning service. When you can grow it. Time. You can you can start to grow that. So exactly. Um, but, the, exactly. but that does bring me up to the, the next question. So like what kind of costs are involved in getting this type of, of a business off the ground? Because obviously you've been a, a, a part of a couple of businesses. Was yeah. one of them different from the other? What did that look like for you with regards to how much you spent uh, to, to produce, you know, some kind of income for yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, that's what drew me to this because for me getting involved with a company like this and just this kind of model, as opposed to me starting up another type of business or getting another job is that it isn't a big startup cost. So like for our particular company, it's $45. Like, and that oh, wow. and the company... Yeah, it's only 45 bucks. The company actually loses money <laughs> when they enroll somebody because they actually spend more on just creating your website and all the fees and the manpower mm -hmm. that goes into getting somebody started. Um, but, but they're investing in people right now. They are building this company. They're very committed. You know, I, I love our CEOs, you know. Um, so it's only 45. And then we actually don't have any fees. There's a lot of companies out there that have website fees and things like that. We don't have any fees at all. There's a lot of companies out there that require you to be on like an auto ship or buy your own products. We don't do that either. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that was a big part for me too. Like, so literally you can't lose money. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's my whole point. Um, and obviously you want to use and try the products. You know, these are products that are family friendly, gender neutral, and it's literally just replacing common things you're using around your home mm -hmm. with hormone safe options. Because a lot of the clean and non-toxic products out there are packaged in plastic. There's actually a lot of these endocrine disrupting chemicals in them. People don't even realize, and there's no FDA. I mean, no regulations at all on what yeah. defines something as clean, you know? So it's kind of a marketing tactic that a lot of companies use and take advantage of consumers. And the average consumer today is smart. They want to know, they're going to look at everything. They're going to look up the ingredients. They're going to figure it out you know yeah so yeah. it's a very transparent um company so really just the 45 dollars. if you want to try products try the average orders are in 150 um to try a few products if you choose it's wholesale um that's the wholesale price 25 percent off um and really that's it and all the training and systems and automation we have is all included so what kind too. of products uh you mentioned them being hormone free and and in you know, uh, very clean products, but, but what kind of products are we actually talking about here? So they started with self-care because obviously we know your skin's your largest organ. That's the biggest impact you can make. Mm -hmm. And what you put on your skin goes directly into your bloodstream. So they started out with like a body oil that replaces, I mean, your beard oil, your hair oil, your body lotion, your kids lotion. So it replaces all of that some face serums. We have a cleansing bar. We have what's called a gua sha stone. That's something new. And then we just released a lip mask as well, um, which is, you know, like any sort of like lip products that you use because you also sure. consume that as well. And then we are going to be going into, I mean, the entire home. So cleaning supplies, laundry detergent, okay. Okay. nutrition, supplements, anywhere where we can make an, an impact. I mean, you, you could do water filtration systems, um, food packaging. Um, there's lots of different ways that we can hmm. make an impact. So there, there are a lot of different directions that this company can take. Um, yeah. th they're not necessarily taking that yet, but right. they're on the precipice. So, um, yeah. you know, I, I guess uh, next would be like, what is kind of the, 
the time commitment that you're going to be expected to put into this kind of adventure and how do you expect that to pay off over time sure. or minimize or increase over time? Because uh, sure. obviously, I mean, time is a premium for folks. Yeah. You know, you get into a business like, okay, well, I'm, I'm kind of dabbling right now, but then it ends up sucking in your whole life. <laughs> what does this look like for you? Yeah. So the way I kind of look at it is this business goes in three phases Mm -hmm. and it is, you get exactly what you put into it. You are not getting paid on the time you put into it, like a job. You're not an employee, more of like an independent contractor, 1099 tax form. If you really want to, you know, and I have my own LLC, you know, and everything, and you can pay yourself and set up a whole business and everything too. Um, But people, I mean, it depends on what you want to make. If you are somebody who wants to make an extra $500 a month, that's great. I mean, that's a few hours a week. If you are somebody like me who wants to build long-term passive wealth over time, I mean, I put a lot more time into it. It is not get rich quick. It is not easy money. But the way you kind of look at it is like phase one of the business is where you are putting in more time than you are making. You know, like you, you're getting it off the ground. You're not investing any money into it, but you are definitely putting your hard your time, which is really important. Yeah. Um, and it's going to feel like, okay, I, I made like 200 bucks this month. Okay. That was your very first month. Like it takes time to build that up. And then the second phase of this business is where your, your, your income equals the effort and time you're putting into it. That's great. Making me a couple thousand a month, whatever that is, you know, and then the goal is to get to that third phase of passive income where your income so far exceeds any sort of time that you put into mm-hmm. it too. Um, and that can be really powerful when you are with a company at the ground level like this, a startup brand, um, and you really become part of it before the bigger momentum phase, which is usually around three to five years. Mm-hmm. We're only in like month eight right now. You know, we only have, I think our last summer was 1900 advocates. I mean, someday we're going to have tens of thousands all over the, I mean, the, the plan is to go worldwide. Yeah. Um, with it too. So every time you start a new country, that's like a new opportunity sure. um, as well. And I mean, the way I look at it too, I mean, my husband, he started a franchise in restoration. So he does like mold mitigation and water damage mm. and fire damage. S- super random. He used to be a derivatives trader working in Chicago. Oh, wow. He used to run a yeah. hedge fund. Big change. Completely different. But he researched tons of business opportunities out there and he landed on a franchise um that had basically what our goal was lowest overhead highest return you know and something where he could build a passive income so the idea is he starts with one territory and he builds up leaders and he builds up leaders in other territories and the goal is that it is a self-running business you know where whether we're on vacation or wherever he's got strong leadership and strong employees that are constantly doing jobs and providing services you know so the same idea with what i do is it's all virtual and it's all networking, you know? Mm -hmm. So I right now am developing leaders and I'm teaching other people how to develop their own leadership teams. um, So that over time, three, four years from now, it is a well-run automated, awesome machine helping people with their products at home. um, And it's passive over time. So. No, that's fantastic. And and that's one of the things that, (laughs) well, and, and when I talk about, um, you know, network marketing and and things like that. The importance to me is getting in kind of on that ground level. Like you mentioned, you know, you're, you're in early with a company, which the potential for growth at that point is just astronomical. Yeah. So you have a real potential here and others who are are looking at this opportunity and saying, well, maybe, maybe not, you know, but, but the opportunity is greatest when you're talking about moving early and often. Um, So I I guess the next question is, where do you see this going in the next five to 10 years? What, what is the growth potential for Hugh and Grace? Um, I mean, I see it going to lots of different avenues. I mean, I was also with a company where I did, I wasn't one of the first in any way. Mm -hmm. Um, I was, you know, it was around, I think it was probably 10 years old or so when I got involved with it and I still had huge growth. I mean, it's what I think any sort of business opportunity you take on, you need to take full ownership of your success and how it's going to happen. And you can find a ton of excuses on why it won't work, or you can put your, your nose down blinders on and really go for it. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
with this, I want to get involved with a company where it's not just going to be good at the ground level. And as a startup, I mean, it is a great opportunity now, but there's also risks involved with getting involved with a startup company and watching it take off Mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, five, 10, 20 years from now, I still see, this is not like a fad. This is not like a gimmicky type of product. This isn't like a magical weight loss pill or a magical spoonful (laughs) or a magical wrap or a magical, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is something like it's a legitimate issue that people have hormone disruptors, you know, and it's something that we're solving for. And it's somewhat of a new topic too. And there's a lot of education behind it. You know, we have a medical advisory board with a company and we have a lot of nurse practitioners. We have a lot of CRNAs on the team. We have a couple of physicians with the team um, and everything. So it's something that I think people can really get behind. So if you're going to choose a company, it's my whole point Mm -hmm. is definitely make sure you're getting involved with something where it's not a shiny object or a lot of hype. It's something that is just having just strong, even slow growth is great because I think that's something that's sustainable long-term. You know, I was with a company where I went, I went quick with it. My last company was a little, a little, they're great, great products, but they are big on the hype. There's a lot Mm -hmm. of hype. There's Mm -hmm. big bonuses. There's car bonuses. They're all of that stuff, which is fun. You know, it's fun um, to like have goals and everything, Um, but it's all about going quick, you know, and I think- people can get a little burnt out when it's it's super fast like that too. So um, my goal with this is to really help people build something sustainably that they're really proud of and that they love. I appreciate that you, you mentioned that though, because there are a a ton of opportunities where you can just, Oh yeah, I'm just going to get into this company and just take off and we're just going to go for a ride. But there's a lot to be said for companies that have solid backing. They've got solid leadership. You know, yep. and and in particular for us healthcare professionals, like you're you're looking at companies that have some kind of healthcare leadership. Mm-hmm. Um, you know that that's a very powerful motivator for people. Um, it, it's very persuasive for people to get involved. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, kudos to you for finding a company that's like that, and and not being afraid to just hey let let's let's do this, let's go for it. Yeah. So, um. You know, I guess my my next question would be, what are your suggestions for people who are looking to start their own business uh, outside of their anesthesia career? What does that look like for for these folks who maybe they're looking for a business like yours or a, another business that that's uh, different? But but what is it that you would suggest them honing in on for their life outside of anesthesia? Sure. I mean, I say it like, honestly, just taking action and and going for something, you know, picking that out. I mean, what I do is not for everybody. And I will say too, like my end goal is not to be like tippy top leader of this company, blah, blah, blah. And all of that, like my goal and what I like to show people is this is a way, whatever business model you choose, a way for you to generate extra income, diversify outside of the OR. And you can use that to fuel other ventures and other incomes as well. Like, like one of the whole reason my husband's even able to open up a franchise is because I had my income, not from anesthesia. That's not what funded it. That's just keeping us afloat because my husband was not working. He was a stay at home dad for like a year and a half. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was the Mm -hmm. only income earner, but I was able to stay part-time, keep our family afloat and use all my income to actually fund his venture building this franchise, you know? And then the goal with that is like, hopefully he'll get that going. And probably when we free up more money, we'd love to get into real estate or Airbnb or VRB, like whatever yeah. that is. But all of that costs, takes money, takes money up front. And for somebody like me, eight years ago, spending 20 grand out of pocket for IVF, I didn't have the capital to start another business or to build another well, I'm paying for student loans and all and that paying business. For student I loans. mean, geez, yeah. uh, it's, it's crazy. You come out of grad school and you owe all this money for a mortgage and for student yeah. loans and, and for everything else. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's no, that, I mean, I think it's awesome what you've created, what you've done um, with the time that you've had. And, uh, I, I think it's fantastic that you're providing opportunities for your spouse, for yourself to venture outside of your comfort zone. Uh, that's yeah. something to really be applauded. Yeah. Well, and I applaud you for doing a podcast like, and just sharing free information for people. You know, we spent all this money going to the grad school, going into debt. And I think what's kind of cool nowadays is you can really be self-taught plug in an amazing podcast and people like you and really learn a lot 
for free. Yeah. <laughs> and be oh, self-made, absolutely. You know? <laughs> yeah. Going to podcast university, man. You can get yeah. your degree real quick. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Totally. Well, no, that gets you right out there in the action, yeah. you know? Absolutely. Well, this has been uh, such a pleasure to have you here. And and I'd love for people to, if they're interested in what you're doing or, you know, any other advice that you might have, how can folks get a hold of you to to find out more about you and your story? Sure. Um, I mean, you can just, you can look me up on social media if that's easy. Um, mm-hmm. I'm simply Sarah Cole, C-O-L-E. At the RAH, um, on Instagram, um, or you can find me over on Facebook. Um, I'm over there too. Um, and yeah, I mean, just send me a quick message that way. Um, you probably find me through Pew and Grace, um, as well on their website and like look me up on their website, but, um, yeah, I'm one of their first people that got it started as well. Um, I work directly with the corporate team and whether you are somebody, if you just kind of want to learn more about it or be pointed in the direction of something that might be a good fit for you, I'm all about helping people. So Awesome. Well, uh, Sarah, it's, it's been a real pleasure to have you today. And, and we're definitely going to have those links in the show notes for people to, you know, get a hold of you and find out more about what you're doing, what you're into. So, uh, thank you again for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was fun. Sarah made some really good points today that I just wanted to take another opportunity to focus on. The first is taking full ownership of your own success and failure. That isn't always easy to do, particularly when we see so many others on social media who are seemingly successful. But taking the time to really um, examine what you're doing, shoring up your weaknesses and building upon your strengths is what's going to ultimately help launch you into success, no matter what side business you choose. The other thing that I appreciated was the discussion of options. Sarah isn't looking at her venture as the end-all be-all here, but instead it's something that provides options and opportunity for her family. She and her husband can pursue other things, business and otherwise, because she's made these moves outside of the operating room. When looking at a potential side business, it's important to ask yourself what your overall goals are, how this business is going to help you get there faster or more effectively, and what other doors may open up for you in the future as a result. There's one thing that is certain. Doing nothing at all won't open any doors for you. So I encourage you to do something, whether that's reaching out to Sarah or researching your own opportunities outside of the OR. As for me, well, that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks for joining me today. And as always, be safe and take care of each other out there. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Plan B CRNA podcast. If you haven't already subscribed and reviewed the show, I'd be honored if you took the extra time. It really helps to expand our reach and get the word out about the show. If you're a CRNA who is interested in sharing your story on our podcast, I'd love to have you. Please email me at bobby at oncallinvestments.com for more information. This episode was brought to you by On Call Capital. They are dedicated to helping providers like you develop passive income and generational wealth through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. Feel free to check out their website at www.oncallinvestments.com and subscribe to their free educational email series. You can find On Call Capital on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also check out our YouTube page, where you'll find all of the show episodes along with other educational videos. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.